Hello, hello everyone. I'm Geraldine Wilkins, the Living Water Quilter, and welcome to another Quilt Conversations Live. Hello, Sheila, Sherry. Hello, Copper. Marsha, how are you? Hello, Denise. Hi, Denise. Hello, hello. How is everyone? It's nice that you ladies are here again. It's good to see you. How was your week? How was your week? Who else is out there? Did I miss anyone? I got Marsha, Sheila, Copper, Sherry, Denise. I said last week I was going to sew, but I didn't get around to it. Something just got in the way. Did anybody sew this past week? Hello, Benita. How are you? Good to see you here. Good to see you. Awesome. And there's Wilda. Hello, Wilda. How are you? Did anyone sew this week? Hey, Nancy. How are you? Welcome. Welcome. If anyone is new, welcome to Quilt Conversations Live. We talk about machine quilting, both ruler quilting and free motion quilting, and some fun stuff in between. Occasionally we'll play some games like bingo. We're going to play tonight. And those of you that are watching during the replay, welcome. We wish you would be here on Friday evenings, but if you can't, Eastern Standard Time, 7 p.m., we understand. Just watch the replay. And so I'm glad you're here watching the replay. And leave a comment below on YouTube if you have a question. Oh, you can do that on Facebook too. Because I look at both of them after the replay is live on YouTube and Facebook. So if you have a question about anything we talk about here at Cool Conversations, just let me know. So let's see. So Sherry, you did a bit of practicing. Good. Whiteboard and long arm. Fantastic. Awesome. Hello, Cassie. Welcome. Okay, so Denise, you got a lot done, but not sewing. So you had a productive week, so that's good. And Copper, you got some sewing. You're back home. And you sew pillowcases for your mom. I love making pillowcases. Those are very nice gifts. Yes, very personal. Did you use any fun fabric? Oh, there goes Rosemary. Hey, Rosemary, how are you? Welcome. Hello, hello. Welcome, welcome. Wilda, you finished a quilt this week. Fantastic. I know you've been working very hard for the past few months on several quilt projects. It's nice to get some finished. Fantastic. Um, so... Tonight, we're going to talk about quilts that we make for, for family. And in particular, we're going to talk about, as an example, the quilt that I made for my mom. One of the quilts I made for my mom, and that is a fidget quilt, a comfort quilt. It has a lot of different names. But before we do that, Okay, so Copper, you said you used some fabric that your mom loved for the pillowcases. Wonderful. Awesome. It's nice to, to do that with the pillowcase with personal fabric. Um, we are going to play... No, before we play bingo, we're going to look at Catherine. Catherine is not always able to join us. She um, does sometimes she's in australia and i guess she's busy during this time but she watched the replays and sometimes she's here hey lorraine and welcome hello she is taking the alphabet design ebook mini course along with some other ladies and she's just made tremendous progress now this course is for confident beginners you've already started free motion quilting but you just need some help with some foundational uh, techniques and how to do patterns. And so she has submitted some amazing uh, samples of what she's been working on. So I'm going to share that with you. That's our show and share for tonight. Uh, there is one of her 
assignments and I just when I looked at it my I was like wow this is fantastic and Catherine said that this course has reawakened her free motion uh, skills that she has now found um, more encouragement and uh, more um, excitement, I guess, encouragement, her memories of things that she has tried in the past or has seen in the past have been reawakened. And so she's really inspired. She's inspired. So I think that's fantastic. Yeah, it looks pretty cool. It looks great. And now this is just one of her assignments. She's handed in so many. She's doing so well. And this is, there are three different assignments, but of course you can do more and you get input from me when you take the class. And one of the assignments, the last one, which I'll show you next, is where you take all that you've learned in the course and you make border and sashing designs based on the idea of using shapes and characters in the alphabet. Yeah, pretty nice. It's very nice, Catherine. And this is um, taking the letter A or V and using it to do a random zigzag. There's no rules in this design. It's a great filler pattern. And just using a character that we already know and write helps re reduce our stress and gives us freedom to stitch and not worry about the design. Uh, so here is the next one. So this is her last assignment. This is assignment number three to do border and sashing designs and combined the different character shapes in the alphabet to make new designs. This is amazing. I love it. Even from last week's live session, she did ribbon. Look at the ribbon that she made. Remember last week in the pillow, if you missed that, go back and watch the uh, breakdown of how I did the love pillow. And part of that was creating a ribbon along the fabric. And so she did that. She is just amazing. She listens, she watches, she practices. And aren't they fantastic? And these are her original designs that she has put together as a result of going through the course. Yeah, it's beautiful, Wilda. <laughs> That's what I said, Denise, when I saw it. I was like, wow, wow, wow. <laughs> Catherine's on fire. <laughs> she is. Hi, Sharon. Yes. Beautiful, beautiful texture. Beautiful texture. Yeah, I love it. You're right, Sherry. It's wow and very, very nice. And so when you're practicing on this small scale, it just helps you so much to um, think outside the box, to combine the different letters and characters within the alphabet, and you just have freedom to design. So congratulations, Catherine. You're doing a fabulous job. Just so happy and pleased for your for you and your progress. And they are her designs. That's part of the course, is that I help in building a foundation, help you to see things a little differently. And then once you do, you start to create your own designs. So very, very, very nice. Well done is correct. The sky's the limit. Yes, copper, indeed. Indeed, indeed, indeed. So this again, for those of you who are new, if you haven't heard of it, link is in the description box below YouTube. It's the Alphabet Design eBook mini course. You get um, stitching path instructions, a PDF that you download, it's a book, and then you get over 50 designs to practice, 
with those characters and then you're able to combine those to make new designs and to explore free motion quilting, to have freedom to quilt and have fun. Yeah. All right, ladies. So we are going to talk about the quilts that we make for family. The last few sessions, we've really talked about a lot of the practical aspects of machine quilting and ruler quilting, you know, more about our mindset, our fears, our concerns, our worries about mistakes. And then we've talked about having a plan to reduce stress. And all of this combined ultimately is to help us move forward in our journey with quilting. And we make quilts for various reasons. And I think one of the big reasons, and let us know in the comments, in the chat, why do you make quilts? Is it the artistic expression? Do you make comfort quilts? Do you make quilts for others? Do you make uh, quilts um, for, for art's sake, for the wall? for your own enjoyment or relaxation. I think we do a combination of both. But I tend to think a lot of quilters, especially when it comes to um, responding to the need of others, that we want to make quilts to comfort others. When there's been natural disasters or tragedies, a lot of quilting groups will get together and make quilts to help either raise money or to send an expression of their concern and care for their neighbor, whether their neighbor is across the street, in another state, or in another country. So usually as gifts, Denise says that she makes them. And Nancy says that she likes to make others feel good when I gift a quilt, it helps me feel accomplished. Wonderful. I do it mostly for enjoyment and relaxation, says Copper, and she likes to make quilts for others. Um, who else? Family keepsakes, Sheila says. Heirlooms, yes. We make it for that too. Mm -hmm. Anyone else? So there's a variety of reasons why we make them. And I think at least a couple of times in our journey and our life as quilters, we're going to make a quilt for someone else. And so we're going to play bingo first to see what type of quilts that you have made for people in your family. So if you haven't played quilt bingo with us before, all you need is a piece of paper and you're gonna do three lines across, three lines across and three lines down to make a four by four grid, four by four grid. So Sharon, you've made quilts for charity and for family. And I find it relaxing too, Sherry. Mm -hmm. And then Lois likes to do it for the challenge and learning something new, as well as for teaching, teaching others to make quilts which is wonderful. So let me know in the chat when you are ready and we can start. Let me know when you are ready. It is a stress reliever, Sherry. That is so true. The creative process, whether it's quilting, painting, or other things to help us release stress is wonderful. Ready, Freddy, says Copper. Ready, is Sherry. Ready. Wonderful, wonderful. All right, ready. Here we go. So again, remember, I think I'm going to do it a little bit different this time because you may have not made this quilt. 
So you're going to put an X if you are familiar, you've heard of this type of quilt, or you've made the quilt. So you've heard of this type of quilt for a family member, or you have made the quilt. All right. Where is it? Here we go. All right, here we go. When I was doing the research on this, I realized that, that I haven't made many of these. I've heard of some of them. T-shirt quilt. Have you made a T-shirt quilt? I've made one in my lifetime. One. That's one of my early quilts. What about silk ties? Have you made a quilt made of ties? That would be a very personal gift for a father, a husband, a grandfather, anyone that you would want to mail, you'd want to make a, t a quilt. What about a retirement quilt? Someone that has retired. And a memorial quilt, a way to remember someone. A fidget quilt. A fidget quilt. And what about a family tree? When I looked at the photos for the family tree quilt, they were fabulous. They were actual trees, and then each leaf was a person in the family. I like that idea. What about a quilt for an anniversary? Have you made a quilt for an anniversary? What about a memory quilt? A quilt to remember someone. Memory. Heirloom. Heirloom quilt. How about a hanky quilt? I don't know how many uh, women or men still use handkerchiefs, but th there's some beautiful antique handkerchiefs that you can get at uh, vintage shops and you can make a quilt out of it. <laughs> Sherry, you better get busy. <laughs> Funny. Baby clothes. Have you made a quilt from baby clothes? Have you heard of that? All right. Sheila has bingo. Bingo for Sheila. Awesome. A photo quilt. A military quilt. And then Sharon has bingo. There's so many different ways that we can make quilts for family, to celebrate family. And I like these ideas. So if you are thinking about making a quilt for a family member, it could be a baby quilt that doesn't include baby clothes, or you can make one from baby clothes. Uh, it was tough. Why was it tough? You haven't heard of them or you haven't made them because you could do both. Either put an X if you've made it or you've heard of it. <laughs> Finally, <laughs> baby. <laughs> uh, why was it tough? Was it because you haven't made it or you've never heard of it? I spy. I spy. That's a good one, Sherry. That's a great baby quilt. I think that's what that is, right? I spy is when you take a novelty fabric and you put it in the quilt. Okay, haven't made. But you've heard of them, Denise, haven't you? Some of them? Okay. Mostly heard of them. These family quilts are, are very specialized. They are for a very specific purpose. I think most of us have made the baby quilt maybe uh, a wedding quilt as a gift. Yeah. I haven't made most of these. The only one, I mean, baby quilt, t-shirt quilt. And I think that's it for me. Yeah. Ah, that's it, Sherry. Several we would like to make. I'd love to make a photo quilt. I'd love to make a family tree quilt. 
the hanky one sounds just beautiful, you know, getting the vintage handkerchiefs. That sounds very nice. Yes, seen them at shows. Exactly, we've seen them at shows. All right. I was wondering, Lorraine, I knew you would have bingo. I bet Lorraine has probably made most of these. Oh, yeah, I've made the t-shirt quilt, the baby quilt, and the fidget quilt. Those are the only three that I've made. All right. Well, ladies, we're going to talk about my fidget quilt, the quilt that I made for my mom, a comfort quilt. But before we do that, I want to talk about my mom, you know, to share her with you. She, um, of course, like others who suffered from um, dementia, that's not who they are. They're not defined by dementia. And if you haven't heard of dementia, many people around the world suffer from dementia. Many family members um, are caring for loved ones that have dementia or Alzheimer's. And if you want more information about it, I have placed uh, links to uh, alzheimers.org about how to get resources and to learn more about um, what Alzheimer's is and what dementia is. But anyway, my mom was one of six children. You can see photos of my grandparents with O.C. and Lily May Pouncey, O.C. and Lily May Pouncey, uh, with their six children. The one at the bottom is when they were younger, and at the top above that is at my grandparents' um, wedding anniversary. I can't remember if it was the 50th or the 60th wedding anniversary. It is an awful disease. It is upsetting, Denise. It's so true. It's more than we can imagine until you go through that with a family member. My mom also, Amanda Pouncey, had several degrees. She um, went to school while I was in her belly. She graduated with an associate degree, science degree, in 1964. And that's the year I was born. And then in 65, she got her RN license. So my mom is an amazingly hardworking woman and she loved her family. She also and did get a degree from uh, John Jay College in, in New York um, in uh, bachelor's of Arts, Black Studies, and she also got her master's. My mom, that's me below the photos of her getting her degree. That's at my high school graduation with my sister and my nephew. Yeah, that is true, Copper. Yeah, considering the times back then. Yep, she did not let that hold her back. That is so true, very accomplished. I'm thankful for the influence that my mom gave her five children. I'm one of five, I'm in the middle, two sisters older, two brothers younger. And my mom in emphasized the importance of education, the importance of hard work. And she was a hard worker. She worked uh, for the New York City school system as a, a nurse, and she also did private duty. She worked um, also for the health care department of New York City as a nurse. And she was just an advocate for education, an advocate for health. And uh, she worked, she worked hard. And she also influenced so many people in terms of sharing with them and helping them to move forward in their life to um to go to school or to get an education and to care for themselves and their families when they were of age. That was her, her thing. Her, her other thing was that she, she loved God and she loved to read the Bible. Um, 
And so I'm sharing all this to sh to share with you that the comfort quilt for or a fidget quilt for someone with dementia or Alzheimer's, it's a way to reduce anxiety. And part of uh, that is making something that they, that's about them. And so that's what I did. I thought about the colors my mother liked and the things that she liked to do, but also the things that you need for that type of of quilt. So my mom, Amanda Pouncey, she passed away in 2019. So it's just a few years ago. Um, and my dear sweet sister, Co Cookie, um, her name is Roberta, but we call her Cookie, was her main caregiver. Um, and I'm, that's her in the photo below with at my graduation. I'm just so thankful for my mom and the legacy that she left her her children and her grandchildren and her great grandchildren before she passed away. She was a great grandmother. So um, here is her comfort quilt. If you're considering making a comfort quilt, this was requested by my sister. She did tremendous research on how to care for our mother. She looked into all kinds of ways to make that difficult time comfortable and easier for my mom. So she learned about these fidget quilts and she really couldn't find one locally. And then she says, well, wait a minute, my sister knows how to sew. She could make one. So she said, hey, could you make one? And I made one and I started to think about my mother's favorite color. Orange is one of her favorite colors. So there's orange accents everywhere. And I put other personal things in it as well. Here's the, what I did. I took a, a stack, 10 inch stack from Island Boutique also known as a um, layer cake. And I made separate units. So it's basically almost like a nine patch. Although the center section, I cut the 10 inch in half. So that would be five by 10, right? You can see it's a narrow strip in the middle. But each one of those sections I started rummaging around my sewing space and I got things that would help in this fidget blanket. And so if you go to that website that I mentioned, they talk about how um, the anxiety and stress associated with Alzheimer's and dementia, it um, their hands get restless. And so they need something to... Um, reduce that stress and anxiety and to keep their hands busy. And so part of that is sensory busyness. So I look for I looked for things that would cause her to open and close, things that were soft, like fur, um, things that she had to um, take in and put out, things that moved, things that had texture. Um, and of course it had to be quilted. So let's look at my table. So this is my table full of supplies. I started gathering all kinds of things like, um, you can see in there some hair, uh, rubber bands, those, the cloth ones, you see buttons, you see twill tape, ribbon, snaps, all kinds of things, beads. I even found uh, one of the verses from the Bible that she loved and incorporated that as a peekaboo window. So I just gathered all these different supplies. Velcro, it made not only the texture, but the sound of the Velcro. 
a zipper, yep, copper, a zipper, all kinds of things to help with keeping her hands busy to reduce that stress. And what made it easy to make was that I could take each of those squares and say, okay, this square is going to be about this. This square is going to be about this. And having it at 10 inches was an ideal size, I felt, in terms of sewing and putting it together. And knowing that I had to think, where would she use it? Would it be mostly in the bed or on her chair? And what scenario? Because you might want to consider the size of it. Maybe a 10 inch square is too big because of the way it's going to be used. So you have to consider that. So we're going to go through each of those squares one by one. The top row, that's the first one from top to bottom and then left to right. The first one is the peekaboo window. Good question, Copper. Copper asks, was there any section that she liked the most? And she liked the beads. She liked the beads the most. She would play, rub her hands, her fingers across the beads. And my sweet sister recorded a video of my mom with her comfort quilt. And that is just a treasure. When I'm able to do it and not be um, overcome with um, emotion or grief, um, I watch the video. And just to hear my mom's voice again and to see her play with her comfort quilt. Um, yeah, she liked the beads. Um, so with the um, peekaboo window, yes, Copper, I'm thankful to have that video. It's, it's just, you know, I share it with family only. It's very personal. Love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your strength. That allowed her to play with the soft hair ties, to, to put it around the buttons, but to also to read. One of the things that my mom continued to do was to sit and read her Bible. She would open it up and with her finger, she would read each word. And she really enjoyed that. It was a tremendous thing to do. It was difficult, um, Sharon, and also um, one of the best gifts I believe I've ever made for my mom. Um, because there's a, a grieving cycle when it comes to having a loved one with Alzheimer's or dementia. And those early signs that something's not right, you're not sure about what that is. And when you learn that it is Alzheimer's or dementia, and you know that there's going to be this pro progression of where they're going to no longer be the person you know, they're going to be someone else. You mourn and you think about, and so it was difficult, and you think about what that's going to be like, but you don't know until you live through it. And I remember when I went to help my sister once, I it was in the early stages, and I just prayed. I said, oh, God, I, I, this is too much. They make people happy. They do. They do make people happy. Um, I prayed and I said, this is too much. This is so hard to see her not be herself. And in that instant, God just answered my prayer. And he said, let go of who she was, hold that memory 
but embrace who she is now, who she's becoming. And when I heard that, it wasn't an audible voice. It was just, it was in me that just, he spoke to my mind and just said, embrace who she is and who she's becoming. That changed everything. And from that moment on, I was able to embrace who she was at that time, whenever I was there. And we would laugh and I would tease her and she would tease me and she'd say, oh, Dina, you're getting fat. I'm like, mom, come on. But it's hard. It's challenging. So making this fidget quilt helped me in my own process of accepting the change in my mother. Yes, it's very true, Denise. It's very true. So here's the zipper for those of you who are considering making one. I'm hoping that not only for today's live, but for those who are watching the replay weeks or months or years from now, and they want to make one, perhaps this might inspire you. So here's the zipper. And with a silk ribbon. And that was to hold little pieces. I wanted her to be able to take stuff in and out. And so this is the AccuQuilt. And I have a lot of AccuQuilt dies with shapes. And I thought, well, I can do a flower. I can do a butterfly. I can do hearts. And so I end up taking a fabric and fusing it to a very stiff um, stabilizer to make it rigid. What size is the quilt? I should know you ladies would ask that. So it's uh, 10 inches, right? The, fat, the um, Each square is 10 inch by 10 inches across the top and bottom, and then five inches by 10 inches in the middle. So that would be 10, 20, 25 by 30, yeah, 25 by 30. So I just went and cut out different shapes so that she can take them in and out and work with that zipper. And they had a, a texture to them. And they, she can either put them inside the zippered pouch or below that is um, another um, place where she can put things in. And that was like a, a, a net. Uh, a netting. I'm retiring soon and I hope to make a few for all my fabric nursing home. Oh, that is wonderful, Susan. Fantastic. What a blessing that will be. Wonderful. Next, in that same row, I made something like of a pin like a pin cushion. So I stuffed that, sold it on top of the fabric, and I put some ribbon and I put a piece of, of twine and a safety pin that she could pin and unpin and play with the edges of that twine. Also notice the quilting the quilting around each of the squares. Each square I quilted separately based on the space available. I chose different patterns. So in this case, you can see the circles, right? You can see the circles. Uh, let's see, okay. And then next, the next row, which was the narrow row. Oh, Copper, you notice the quilting right away. and. You know, because every project that we have has different needs in terms of finishing. And just to let you know that once the top was completely, each block was assembled and then the top was assembled, I did what you call a quick turn. So no binding. I just sandwiched the top right sides together with the back and then the, the batting and then turned it inside out like a, a pillow. 
and then did a stitch along the edge. So this one has a lot of texture. This, I have it, her orange, favorite orange color accents. There's snaps. There's some texture with um, some fabric that is fake or faux fur and some more rope-like texture. So that's another example of adding sensory type things to it. There's some twill tape. Minky, yes, Minky is a good option. Copper. And twill tape with a uh, clip, a clip. And you can see from my hands the size of it. Some of them were big enough that it wouldn't be challenging and others were small so that maybe she'd have to concentrate a little bit harder on how to open and close things. Some things were easy to do, some things were challenging to do. Okay. Uh, and then the last of that middle section, Velcro, something that's Velcro off and on hearing that sound, feeling the texture of the Velcro tape. And then I used something in quilting that we use quite a bit for the border. And those are um, prairie points, prairie points. And so I just incorporated these triangles that allowed me to add more buttons, more things to open and close. Okay. So you're going to make each of those squares according to the person or activity that you think would benefit them and to incorporate different textures. In the last row, there's a pocket. So those same shapes, this is the butterfly that I use from the AccuQuilt Go cutter, that die, those, whether it's a butterfly, hearts, she can put that in the pocket or anything that she wanted, she could put in the pocket. And then the twill tape, I went all the way across from end to end, and then I wrapped it with another piece of, of, of textured material that she could run back and forth, back and forth. So each square had something that you either opened or closed or had some kind of movement or something that you can take in and out. Um, I don't know that I would make anything differently. That's a good question. Perhaps because she was, uh, she enjoyed the beads. Maybe I would have added more beads. Um, I did wonder if, these are the beads, by the way, that she loved to run her fingers across. Yes, more, more beads. This was um, one of those strand of beads that's on a ribbon that you would put uh, in a pillow or as uh, decorative beads along the edge of, say, curtains or something like that, a swag. Um, and then I used just a simple a clip that she can clip onto the prairie point you see at the top of the photo. And then where you see my hand is another prairie point. But instead of it being loose, I use a Velcro dot so that it can open and close a Velcro dot. It was pretty far along. Um, I would say four, maybe four years into it. 
maybe five. I don't remember exactly, but it was later. It was not early. Um, the more, and my sister really is the one who recognized that she needed something. The things that were keeping her occupied and busy early on were not working anymore. And when I would go and stay with her, you know, a week, two weeks at a time um, to help my sister and give my sister rest, um, I looked for different things that would help her stay busy. And she liked to color. She also liked uh, magazines. She loved to go through magazines. So I would bring quilting magazines and she loved to look at the quilts. Hello, hello. No worries about being late. So glad you're here. Yes, Denise, you're very welcome. It's taken a while to share, you know, these kinds of things. I think we all have different stages of being able to be open about something that is so emotional um, and difficult, um, a difficult time in our lives. But I'm hoping that this is going to help someone who has been wanting to make one of these. And also a weighted quilt. Yeah, that's right. I've heard about those, Copper. A lot of ladies uh, are making those weighted quilts because they provide comfort. It almost feels like a hug because it's weighted. Um, so... Who notices the free motion quilting around the beads? I threw in some feathers. So I had some circles, some feathers. I had some straight lines, a little bit of everything in the quilting. So it's another opportunity. Remember in one of the previous live sessions, we talked about the practice of practice the different ways in which we can practice. And so this is one of those examples where you can experiment and try new things because the space is small, it's a small commitment, and you get a chance to hone, improve your skill in machine quilting. So there are some quilted feathers. Oh, Sherry, it was not quilt as you go. I made the entire top. I, of course, made each, like I mentioned, each square based on the different activities. I attached those first. Then I sewed all those squares together. Then I made the quilt sandwich. And I did it envelope style. Well, not envelope style. What do you call it? Uh pillowcase style where you sew all the way around maybe it's not pillowcase but you sew all the way around the edge when you have right sides together the back the front right sides together with the batting on the outside and then you stitch along the edge and leave an opening and so that's what I did and then I turned it inside out but I forget the terminology Thank you, Copper. A lot of that was based on the things that I had in my sewing room. And so if you search fidget quilts or comfort quilts, you're going to get inspiration. I did do that. I did do a little research to see what others were doing for fidget quilts because they're made for adults as well as for kids. Quick turn. Thank you, Wilda. That's it. <laughs> Quick turn. So Sherry, it was a quick turn method where the whole top is pieced. All right. Here is the very last square. And in this one, I made a simple little... Um, okay, I don't know why I'm missing words now, but a um, pocket, that's it, pocket where... They were little cards. Each card had some um, Bible verse or positive uplifting saying. And she could take the cards out and read it and put it back in. 
and then snap the pocket closed. So again, opening, closing, and then her personal love. <laughs> yes, thank you, copper pocket. <laughs> yes. Uh, well, I'm not sure why I didn't do a binding. You know what? I think I know why. Once I go back to the large photo, I know why I wouldn't do it now, but I don't know if that was the reason then. But if you notice, there's a lot of uh, twill and other things that are on the are that are in the seam allowance. And I thought it might be too bulky to do a binding around twill tape and other things. You can even see it in this photo. I, if I attached a binding, then I would have to get around that twill tape. And then I also thought is others wanted to make this who are not quilters, but sewers, they may not know how to do binding, but could easily do a quick turn. Great. I'm so glad this is inspirational, ladies. Awesome. Yeah, it is, Denise. It is. I thought I would cry tonight. I really prayed about being able to share this without crying. All right, Copper, I'm glad that makes sense. Quick turn idea, yes. Especially then you're not limited on what falls out on the edge of the, of the quilt. All right, so here it is again, each row with something that would help reduce my mother's anxiety, reduce her stress, to keep her hands busy. Um, oh, you're welcome, Sheila. You're welcome. Thank you, Denise. So sweet of you, ladies. Thank you. I'm so glad that this was inspiring and that many of you are going to start thinking about not just making them for family members, but maybe for others who are in care facilities who don't have family members. I mean, think about the times we're living in. We're living in a time where even those with family can't see their family when they're in these facilities because of the pandemic. What a blessing this would be to make. And maybe it's not nine separate squares. Maybe it's four, four 10 inch squares to make something to help reduce that stress and anxiety associated with Alzheimer's and dementia. I love this idea of being able to comfort others with the skills and talents that we have in quilt making. And so when I talk to you ladies about machine quilting and different techniques and honing in on those 10 different steps, you know, we develop those skills so we can make something like this, right? I am so thankful that you ladies were here to hear this story about my mom's comfort quilt a quilt to bring comfort and to reduce the anxiety and stress associated with dementia. And as I said before, that's just a small part of what happened to my mom, but it's not who she is and that's not who our loved ones are. I'm thankful that we were able to care for her. Memory care facility. Okay, let me see if I can get this a little bit better here. That must have been so hard, Sherry. And so there are resources. I don't think anyone's ever ready 
whether they're going to care full time for their loved one or to have them in a memory care facility. It's a very difficult and stressful time. So many unknowns are ahead, but I'm thankful for like alzheimers.org and other organizations that are there to help and support. So if you know anyone that needs help or resources, go to that website. There's a whole list of resources and information about the stages so that you know what's coming. Oh, you're welcome, Lois. You're welcome. Okay, yeah. Oh, thank you, Sharon. That's very kind of you. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. But I'm just hoping that um, you see this as another example of why we quilt and how we want to be able to use our quilting, not just for ourselves, but for others. And whether it's a fidget or memory or comfort quilt, it can be a baby quilt for those quilts that many gills make for uh, Nick use at the hospitals, uh, intensive care uh, units in hospitals for babies. Uh, for seniors, for their walkers who are in care facilities. You are welcome. Oh, there's my sister. Oh, Cookie. Yes, it was an emotional quilt to make. And um, that's my sister, everybody. She's on Facebook. She cared for our mother. I'm so thankful for my sister. I love you, Cookie. I love and miss you. You know, ladies, I haven't seen my sister in three years since the pandemic started. And um, I wish I could give her a hug. I miss her very much. Um, but anyway, another example, right? of how we can use our skills for machine quilting. I'm so glad you ladies were here and I'm glad this was inspirational. Don't forget now to share this, not just for the machine quilting, but maybe someone you know who has started sewing because of the pandemic and they might have a desire to make a memory quilt or a fidget quilt. Oh, Sharon. Wow. So that's wonderful to hear. I'm sorry that she had it as well, but you were, she recognized each of you. Wow. To the very end. And she loved the Lord. Oh, Sharon. Hey. Thank you, Sheila. Virtual hugs all the way around. Yes. But share this video with those who might need this kind of inspiration, who started sewing because of the pandemic and they might want to make one of these. It's also, you know, it's emotional yet therapeutic because you're giving something to a loved one um, or you might want to make it for others who might need it, right? Um Oh, my sister, I miss you more. <laughs> um, you're welcome, Wilda. Yes, seeing photos of my mom and her siblings. Yeah, pretty sweet. And my grandparents. Yeah, thank you, ladies. So I hope you get a chance to sew this coming week. Um... Everyone, please stay safe. There's a lot going on in this world. Um, you know, fires and floods and hurricanes. Just pray. And I pray that you all remain well and safe. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, that's so sweet. So sweet. 
So don't forget, give it a thumbs up and share the video with friends and family, Facebook and otherwise. I'm so glad we had another wonderful Friday together. And thank you for listening and learning about my mom's comfort quilt. And if you decide to make one, please let me know. Send me an email when you're finished. I'd love to see it. And those who are watching during the replay, if you have any questions or want more information about how I made my comfort, my mother's comfort quilt, Amanda's comfort quilt, I'd be happy to answer any questions. Just leave a comment below or send me an email. All right, ladies. Have a wonderful, wonderful weekend. I'll see you next week. Take care. God bless you all.